Decision paralysis. Uh, one of the things that slows down artists or creatives when they're making something like writing a novel or making an art book or making an indie game. <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm stepping into this role, I'm seeing that one of the things that slows me down the most is indecision paralysis. And what that means is I've got too many options. I could do too many things and, and ultimately sometimes it's hard to make a decision and I want to figure out something else before I can make a decision on that thing. And so uh, one of the ways that I'm combating this is with a technique that essentially sounds insane, but it totally works. And that is to expect impossible goals from yourself on a daily basis. And my hope, my hope is that this could help you if you're painting or you've got a lot of work on your plate and you're maybe struggling with your perfectionist, this can really help you to get over those hurdles. So a good example of this is, for instance, I have to block out an entire dungeon uh, in one day. And that means make as many design decisions as I can without second guessing myself, uh, going in and adding rooms that I might end up cutting later. I might end up moving them around. It doesn't matter. The point is to just build the sketch. And this is equivalent, I would say, in writing, when you're writing a novel, uh, not every writer does this, mind you, but I found that the best way to write a novel is to do a first draft uh, off the seat of your pants. Uh, just make stuff up. You, you don't have to answer any questions. You don't have to create any solutions. You know, All you have to do is just whatever comes to mind first. In fact, trying to stop thinking and just doing to get that first draft done allows you to take a, a look at the whole thing from a distance and evaluate what's working and what isn't. And sometimes you find that the whole thing doesn't work and you maybe have to throw out literally half of it, but you know what? You figured out what doesn't work. You figured out some things that don't. So the next day when you're sitting down to do that painting, and you're sketching the whole thing out. You're planning, here's where the, the castle is in the background, and here's where the character is running in the foreground, whatever it is. When you're doing that really quick layout, you're just forcing yourself to make decisions quickly. You're not inhibited by the white bull. You're not scared of jumping in there and maybe you need to change the angle of a character's face. If you're doing this on paper and you're sketching out your, your stuff, just make sure you do it really lightly. Don't press really hard. Don't commit to anything. A lot of times people get so obsessed with making it impressive right out of the gate that they focus on details way too soon. And so like the, the comparison with art would be if you're doing a painting and you don't sketch anything out, you just immediately start on a character's face. And then, then you've got all this blank space up in the top right corner or something, and you don't really know what to do with the character's arm. And, and let me know in the comments if you've been here before, because I'm pretty sure you have. I've been there many a times where I just jump in and I start doing like all these details on one little part. And then I realize, oh man, I still haven't figured out what the heck I'm going to do with that other piece, that other part of the painting that makes it all come together. And if you do this approach where you ask impossible things of yourself, if you, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, I am going to sketch out this whole scene, screw it. This whole, like, I'm going to sketch out this whole comic in like this weekend, if that's your thing. Or if, if you're doing your, um, if you're doing like a painting, you're just like, ah, I am going to finish this whole painting today. Like first pass, you know, it's not true. You know, in the back of your mind, you're going to come back and revisit it. You know, you're going to have some mistakes, but by forcing yourself to just push through you won't dilly dally. You won't stop and like go, ah, well, you know, what about this other thing? And I'm just going to get caught up on the character's expression, or I'm going to get caught up on the character's weapon design or something of that nature that can end up really hindering you from even making progress. And you could ultimately find that you've put a ton of time into something that ultimately doesn't even work. It's not even functional and you don't like it because you don't like the whole composition. Now, there are two caveats to this, and you absolutely need to do this, by the way. If you're going to do this process to challenge yourself, to break through that, that inhibition, to break through that, that uh, indecision, if you're going to do this, you number one, you cannot promise that impossible deadline to a client. Mm -mm. You always go the other way when you're <laughs> promising to a client. 
with the deadline that you promised to a client, you always want a little extra padding so that you can come in early with something that's more impressive than what they asked for. Okay. So if it's something where, uh, you are taking on a job for a client, you say, all right, I'll get that to you by Tuesday. But in your mind, you're like, I'm going to have that done before the end of the weekend. And it's already Saturday because you never want to come to your client with excuses as to why you didn't do something impossible that you promised. Okay. Uh, the, the second thing is the psychology of what happens when you fail at this. Okay. Because this is also a big, big part of it. And I've talked a lot about this in many of my videos. We are all going to fail to live up to our own expectations. Uh, when we're trying to get skinnier, we're never skinny enough. When we're trying to get to be a better painter, we're never a good enough painter. You know, we all have this. It's always, and, and that's also what drives us. So we need to accept that this is a natural part of things. And so when you're looking at your artwork, when you're looking at something that maybe you spent the whole weekend, you gave it so much of your time. You didn't dilly dally though. You didn't stop to browse the internet. You didn't stop to look at a new podcast or look up that show, or maybe, you know, grind on your RPG character and your final fantasy 15, 14 or 15 or whatever. You're not like, you're not dilly dallying with distractions. Uh, you're, you're getting stuff done and you are at the end of that one day or that weekend, you are evaluating the quality of the work that you've made. You're looking at the whole picture. Okay. And instead of thinking, oh man, of course I, I came up, you know, less than high quality, of course. Uh, well now, now you've got extra time. And so you need to adjust your perspective. Perspective is everything, by the way, perspective I'm not talking about the, the line perspective on your horizon line. I'm literally talking about how you perceive it is everything and how you perceive this scenario and this situation is that, Hey, I'm way ahead of where I would have been if I had dilly dallied and just tried to, uh, do this in, in this meticulous, slow way where I'm, uh, you know, just, uh, second guessing myself on every arm and every angle of everything. If you, if you want to just see how something looks, do thumbnails first, jam out several thumbnails. I have literally sketched out 10 pages of a comic in two days, uh, just from thumbnails, creating storyboards, using thumbnails, just so that I could evaluate the whole sequence and go, okay, well, maybe I need a another more frame here, a couple more frames there. Okay, now I can add in uh, more of a, a, a moment where the character shows their expression or they have this one line that comes up and this gives it more emphasis, really evaluating from taking a look at what's there. It's so much easier. And this is the psychology of it, by the way. And this is what it all boils down to. It's so much easier to critique something than it is to conceive something, right? We all know this is true and you know this is true because you got a thousand armchair quarterbacks that are telling you the, all the ways that you did your thing wrong if you post it online, right? All the critics, they come out in droves because it's so much easier to critique than it is to conceive. And so your job is to throw something out as quickly as you can, get something out there as quickly as you can, and then use your discerning eye to critique yourself as if you were an outside observer. Don't take all the emotion of the pain of what you, what you put into it, you know, and, and instead take a look back from the outside looking in and go, all right, how can I make this better? Separating yourself from the work almost entirely. How can I make this better? What would make this a better painting? What would make this a better sequence? Whatever it is that you're working on, what would make this a better game? Whatever it is that you're working on, all this applies by having a first draft of your whole body of work here, you can then evaluate where you want to add some parts that maybe lead up to something in another part of your story, or you could uh, create more mystery, or you could drop hints to the reader. For example, this is your first draft, get your first draft done in an impossible time. And you'll be able to evaluate how to make the whole thing better. Then you can start to spend more time going in meticulously. You can still set impossible goals for yourself, but they should be a little bit closer to more reasonable. You're honing in on a more reasonable goal for yourself. And the, the goal here is also to strive for excellence. And I've talked a lot about this in recent videos as well. Be proud of the work that you're doing and take as long as, as you need to, to make it great. Unless you have a client deadline, <laughs> that's the caveat there. So this has certainly been working really well for me. You know, uh, we're making incredible strides with the game. Uh, hopefully I can give you some updates on that soon, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. If you have any other suggestions on how you uh, can structure 
you know, facing the white bull or just facing indecision and just making decisions to get them done. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions as well. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about my painting process and you'd like to discover what real concept artists do. That's a job that I did for 20 years on some of the world's biggest video games. And I have workshops that I've created over on my Gumroad channel, and that'll allow you to go step-by-step step through everything that you would need to know about the actual process of creating environments and characters for video games. It is my ongoing goal here on my YouTube channel to help you achieve your art dreams and get that art career that you've always been dreaming of. So please do subscribe and sound off in the comments below. Let me know you're here and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, ciao.